Country Club opened back in 1929, designed originally by Alex Finley. It really is really two very good nine holes of golf that aren't necessarily, they don't look the same. So the swing, the circumference of the swing got long too fast. You can see how we bottom out the line. Right. Remember, we reduced the size of our swing. That reduces the swing speed. Anthony, give us a little history. I mean, everybody probably, most, I get everybody, and welcome to Inside Golf. I'm Harry Donahue, and today we're at Burlington Country Club in Mount Holly, New Jersey. Private club opened back in 1929, designed originally by Alex Finley. And about 10 years ago, well, they acquired some land, they expanded the golf course, and as one reviewer described it, it is a gem. Tough, but manageable. Host pro Mike Mack will give us a tour with Colleen Wolf. And you've heard about stack and tilt, but maybe you're not sure what stack and tilt is all about. We're going to show you. Burlington Country Club, stack and tilt. Coming up next on Inside Golf. Inside Golf is brought to you by Yingling, America's oldest brewery. Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, where America goes to play. Visit online at phillytomyrtle.com by Nike Golf, and by the Philadelphia Section PGA, celebrating 90 years. The Philadelphia Section of the PGA of America is celebrating 90 years. Since 1921, the professionals of the Philadelphia Section have proven themselves to be the players, teachers, managers, and stewards of the game of golf in the Philadelphia area. They are the experts in the game and business of golf. Please join us in celebrating our 90-year commitment to the game of golf. Welcome back to Inside Golf. Mike Mack joins us today, head PGA professional here at Burlington Country Club. Mike, you've been here for 30 years. Let's talk about some of the changes that you've seen in your time here at Burlington. Well, Colleen, first off, I want to welcome you to Burlington Country Club. We're excited to have you here today in Inside Golf. So in 1929, the golf course was designed by Alexander Finley. Obviously, I haven't been here that long, but <laughs> almost. Uh, and then in, 19, in 2001, we brought in Brian Alt from Alton Clark Associates to do a redesign and a renovation. Uh, so basically what we've done, is we acquired some, uh, some land. Uh, we enlarged our back nine substantially. It, it was always a very small, confined nine holes. We built uh, about four new greens back there, a new hole, put in five water features. So we've turned a very short, confined nine into a very, very good nine holes of golf with a lot of strategy and a lot of water hazards that come into play. So basically that's the most important thing I've seen in my uh, 30 years here at Burlington Country Club. The golf course renovation has, has made us a very challenging and, and, and quite a good golf course. For those who haven't been here yet, why don't you describe the layout of the course, some of the features that it has? The front nine is the original Alex Finley design uh, with some renovations in the way of bunkers and you know some fairway bunkers that we put in uh, in 2001. Uh, there's one uh, green complex change, number five, that was done by Brian Alt in the renovation. And uh, so the front nine is kind of traditional. It's tree-lined, it's, it's tight, uh, it's, it's quite long. Uh, and then the back nine is more uh, current. It's, it's, it's a little more open. We planted some trees, they haven't matured yet. So it's more open. We have a lot of water hazards. We put in, I believe, five ponds on the back nine uh, during the renovation. So the back nine has a lot more strategy involved where you have to play around the hazards. And it's, it's a really, a, really a two very good nine holes of golf that aren't necessarily, they don't look the same. What about the playability? What type of golfer does this course lend itself to? The straight hitter and uh, someone that can control their distances. The greens are very small, so you have to be able to control how far your golf ball's going. So, I mean, that's who it favors, basically. You've been here 30 years. What's some of the advice that you can give golfers coming in here for the first time and playing this course? Well, first off, have fun, because that's what it's all about, is having fun playing golf. Uh, I, I always tell people the same thing. Hit whatever it takes to get in the fairway. I mean, if you don't, if you can't get your driver straight, hit your three. What if you can't get your three with straight, hit a hybrid. I mean, anything it takes to get in the fairway here. If you play the white tees, the golf course is only 6,000 yards long. So it's, it's not that long. You don't need to hit it far, but you do need to hit it fairly straight. So that, that would be my advice. Now, I know Burlington Country Club has had a lot of big events here. Yes, we have. We're, uh, we're very proud of the fact that we've hosted a lot of USGA qualifiers. We're also very proud of the fact that we have uh, one of the sections, the PGA section's uh, biggest tournaments of the year. We've, we've just recently, last year, celebrated our 25th anniversary of it. So we've run 26 of them so far. It's a two-day event. Our members are involved on Sunday, and they've 
embraced it, and it's just a great day for the members and the pros. The pros play both days. It's a 36-hole score, so that's a great event for the club uh, and the and the, PG, the Philadelphia PGA. So, yeah, we've been fortunate. We've hosted a lot of events. I think you know, the golf course is good enough that we can probably uh, host anything and stand up to the test. What do you think makes Burlington Country Club different than the other golf courses in the area? One of our strengths is the condition of the golf course. I mean, we have a golf course superintendent that is is the best, Brian Minnemeyer, and our course is, is typically in as good a shape as any golf course around, regardless of the, the amount of money you pay to get in these other clubs. I mean, we're very reasonably priced, and we have a very, very high quality golf course condition-wise. The other thing is the membership. The membership is so diverse. We have, we have people that are you know, going to work every day, and we have people that are retired and, and set for life. So that, that diversity really makes the club interesting. And, and another unique thing about Burlington is, is the ease it is to, for a new member to find a game. I mean, when you come in, there's, there's three or four or five groups that would certainly welcome you in, and you can play with them and, and make friends very easily here at Burlington Country Club. So that, that's basically what's unique about our club. Mike, we're going to see two of your favorite holes on this course. Yeah. Which ones are those? Well, 11 and 12, and, and the reason we picked those is they're part of the renovation. They're the first two holes on the new property that we acquired, and, and, they, and they require some quality golf shots and some thought. So uh, it'll be interesting to play those two holes. Looking forward to it. All right, let's head out. OK, here we are at the 11th hole. Uh, we're going to play the golf hole from the black tee markers. We have uh, five tee locations uh, on every hole here at Burlington. Uh, the majority of our members play the whites. Um, it's a completely different angle, so there's a lot of variety on this hole if we play the, the whites versus the blue and the black. There are some days we put the tee for our tournaments up on the white or silver tee, and it becomes a drivable par four, about 250 yards over the water. Uh, this tee, it's about 290 to carry the water. There are a few guys that try that, but uh, today we'll just tr try to hit it right at that bunker, which is about 240 yards away. That should be pretty good. That's directly at the bunker. It'll probably be about 25 yards short of it, and we'll have a direct uh, shot into the front left pin location. Okay, here we are at our second shot on 11. And because we played down the left side, you'll notice we've taken a lot of the water out of play, and, and we have a much better angle to that front left hole location. Uh, the far right side of the fairway over there, if we had been in that side, we'd have had to come in over the bunker, over the water, and it just makes a much more challenging shot. So now that we played down the left side, we have a certainly a, a, certainly a much more accessible pin. Let's see if we can hit it close. That looks pretty good. Looks like we have about a 10 footer for birdie. Let's go up and see if we can make it. And we have about a, I don't know, about an eight to 10 footer here. It's probably a right edge putt. We're kind of a little bit uphill. Let's see if we can't knock it in and get us a three. If you play the hole down the left side here at Burlington on number 11, when the pin's front left, it's pretty easy to get a uh, little uh, uphill 10-foot birdie putt and make three. All right, so we just got done playing the 11th hole at Burlington. It's uh, one of the more strategic holes here at the club where we have to uh, determine the line of play uh, to make the, uh, the second shot the easiest. Now we're at our 12th hole, which um, is probably one of the hardest par threes in Delaware Valley. We're playing uh, the back tee right here. It's 202 yards to the hole. You'll notice uh, that it's all over water. The bank in front of the green uh, is, uh, is certainly sloped toward the hazard, so if you hit that, it will come back into the hazard. So it's a very difficult shot. I'm going to hit a four hybrid, which should carry about 195 yards, which will be a perfect uphill birdie putt on the uh, 12th hole. Let's see how we do. That yeah, looks pretty good. We should have a birdie putt with that one. Yeah, it looks like about a 25-footer uh, straight up the hill. I'm very pleased with that shot on this difficult hole. We've gotten over the uh, hazard. We have about a 30-footer uh, here on the, the 12th hole at Burlington. Probably has about uh, six inches of break right to left. It's straight uphill. Let's see if we can make another birdie. Oh! Another birdie. Anytime you make two on the 12th hole at Burlington, you have to be happy. Mike, two birdies out there. That's pretty impressive. 
Well, Colleen, I've been here a long time. I know the golf course. I've been here 30 years, so I know the greens. Pretty easy to read the putts, hit a couple of good shots, and uh, got a little lucky. Well, we've learned a little bit about Burlington Country Club. We've seen you play two great holes here. Let's talk about some membership options. Well, we have some really attractive membership opportunities. We have a wonderful intermediate program for uh, people that are 35 and under. And uh, we have a great program for uh, stockholders for our, our equity club. So we certainly welcome any interest that uh, your audience would have. All right. Well, our audience can learn more about Burlington Country Club on our website, InsideGolf.net. And coming up next, we're going to learn a little bit about Stack and Tilt. Mike, what's been your experience with the program? Well, Colleen, I've been teaching a long time, obviously. And, uh, you know, I've been recognized as a good teacher. And you know, I I've learned so much from those guys. I mean, I met Mike about five or six years ago, Andy a couple of years ago, and uh, learned a lot about the golf swing. And I know I've become a better teacher. I think your audience will, will learn a lot, and they'll be introduced to probably a system that's somewhat controversial but basically misunderstood. So your audience is in, in for a treat. All right, Steve Siraki, he's the Director of Instruction at the Stack and Tilt Golf Academy. He joins us next on Inside Golf. Teach someone how the controller up at the ground is where your weight is. The experience with golfers voted number one for quality, selection, and affordability. Over 100 different championship courses, including seven of America's 100 greatest. Indulge in gourmet cuisine, pristine beaches that offer endless activities, active nightlife, and more. It's an easy drive and affordable non-stop flights are now available from over 25 cities. Start planning your Myrtle Beach golf vacation today and request a free quick quote for the best package rates. Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. It's where America goes to play. Colleen Wolf's wardrobe is provided by Adidas, the leader in men's and women's apparel for the athletic golfer. Welcome back to Inside Golf. Burlington Country Club is home to the Stack and Tilt Golf Academy. Yeah, yeah, to yeah, learn yeah, more yeah, about yeah, this yeah, unique yeah. system, let's take forward. a look in on a lesson. Right, now there's the picture. The first couple parts that we're going to do is just control where the club hits the ground here. And the first piece that we would uh, teach someone how to control where the club hits the ground is where your weight is. Okay. And we'll start out with um, putting the mo majority of your weight on your front foot. Okay. Just so we want no weight going back on the back, so we'll have more of it on the front. And then the other piece is, Frank, is making sure that as you're doing this that your, the handle of the club's always staying forward. So you, when you're doing this, you're going to have the weight, the weight's going to be on the front. The handle's going to be forward. So no releasing of the club. Keep the handle forward, wait for it. Start punching some of these balls out. So you see that, right, Frank? So you see how the club bottomed out behind? Right. The reason on that, why it bottomed out behind was as you hit this ball, if you're the ground right here, if this is the ground, and I keep the handle forward, and I keep swinging back and through with the handle forward, you see how the circumference is staying the same? Mm -hmm. What you did was as you swung back, you actually uncocked and rolled the club. So the swing, the circumference of the swing got long too fast. And you see how it would bottom out behind you. Right. So even though you had the weight forward, you still hit behind the ball because the handle wasn't enough forward when you hit it. Stack and Tilt is a reorganization of the game's fundamentals to help reduce the barrier of entry to the game for the beginning level golfer. But it's a system that is simple enough in the beginning but it advances in sophistication so that should an experienced golfer need a sophisticated definition, the system is broad enough to offer that. As you're hitting the pieces, the handle's always staying forward. When you're coming through, you're having this flip in the roll. Right. That's what's causing you to hit thinning and hitting behind these balls. So the handle has to stay out in front of the club the whole time. Typically how golf is presented is uh, you have to have a nice grip, a good grip. You have to have good posture. Your ball position has to be correct. You have to aim right at the, at the target. And the, the problem with that is, is that you can't measure good golfers by how good their grip is, by their stance, and by any uh, particular ball position. In other words, those, those uh, things, the grip, alignment, posture, and stance are actually variables. And the problem with golfers learning, learning how to play golf is that they're learning the variables in the beginning and not really the basics. If I'm looking at Frank right now, I could, I could do about six different things with his stance, with his grip, how he's aiming this club, but those aren't, aren't any importance of why he's not hitting this ball. What is important is where his weight is, which he's doing a nice job of, but the second piece we're introducing now is how the handle of the club needs to be forward. And just because his grip's bad or his stance is bad, it doesn't mean he's going to hit a bad shot. 
he could have all those parts not be right, but still at this ball right because he'd have the handle and the weight forward. The, the fact that the fundamentals of golf are presented out of order makes the barrier of entry to the game of golf too high. Correct. In other words, it makes it too hard in the beginning for the entry level player to get good enough, fast enough to enjoy the game to stay, to continue to play it. This is a, and this is a broad question for the industry of golf instruction as to redefine the fundamentals or the basics to help the beginning player to improve faster, but also the system, the stack and tilt system is broad enough that it advances in uh, sophistication as you go along. In other words, um, a tour player may need a more detailed answer about the same principle that the, high, that the high handicapper needs in the beginning. And the poorest players would hit further back on the line. The best players will hit on this line time and time again. And Frank, the first the parts that we're doing is we're making sure that your weight is slightly on the front. And the second piece is that the handle is always staying forward so that my handle is always in front. So I can keep hitting on or in front of the line. No breaking of the wrist. The handle is always forward. So if I'm just going to do a little chip, have the weight forward, the handle forward, you see where the club hit the ground, yeah. how it hit in front, how my handle is still forward. Mm -hmm. The first measurable difference between the skill level of a golfer is the ability to hit the ground in the same spot. In other words, the expert players can all swing this club time after time and hit the ground in the same spot or along this line. Whereas the poorer player, whenever they swing, the bottom of their swing fluctuates wildly. They may hit behind the ball one time, they may hit on top of the ball the next time. And that is a measurable difference between good players and bad. That was pretty good. And the good part about this too is, Frank, you can just practice this in your yard or in your garage. Have well, a way to get rid of the crab have, have, right? have a line, just have a line down and practice keeping your weight in your handle forward and hitting in front of this line. How to control where the club hits the ground. Once a person learns to interpret the game differently and to view it through what the basics really are, the game becomes much more manageable. You don't have to have the perfect grip. You don't have to have a perfect stance, but you do have to be able to hit the ground in the same spot every time. Does the grip change at all when no. you're trying? No, mm -mm, the grip doesn't change. Grip still is fine. You could change your grip, but you don't need to. Right on the line. Nice. See how that one, Frank, right on the line. Another one right on the line. That's why, Frank, it's a system. And then you, now you know what to practice. You're not diving off into six different directions. First piece of advice to you as a golfer is whenever you play, start to watch where your club hits the ground. The expert player always hits the ground on or in front of the ball. The poorer player hits the ground inherently further back. And if that's the case, then what would be uh, a couple of tips? We say this system is easy. Okay, well it is easy in the beginning to help the poorer player. and. What, what's easy about it? Well, it's easy to learn to control where this club hits the ground if you know how to recognize your problem. Steve, this isn't really a system that's commonly taught, but it seems like every golfer can benefit from it. Yes, Colleen. In this system, what we're trying to do is teach the correct fundamentals in the correct order so the golfers get better the fastest. And when someone comes for a lesson or comes to one of the schools with Mike Bennett and Andy Plummer, all we're going to do is implement what piece they need at that time for them to play better faster and it's a system that's broad enough to where the beginning golfer can learn and where the expert tour player can also learn. And you can use any club with this, right? Yes, it's the uh, same principles apply for a driver as they would for a 10-yard pitch shot. Well, if you want more information about the Stack and Tilt program, you can go to InsideGolf.net. We'll have everything right there. And coming up next, well, Harry rejoins 90s, us with has, our teed off if five friends are having a light beer and they all put their drinks down in the same place, how long will it take to find the Yingling Light Lager? About that long. Because the rich amber color of Yingling Light Lager makes it stand out from the rest. The true lager flavor, however, makes it disappear. 99 calories, 100% authentic lager. Yingling Light Lager, from America's oldest brewery. Rethink your light beer. Guests of Inside Golf enjoy dining at Sin Sin, the popular Asian fusion restaurant located on Germantown Avenue in the heart of scenic Chestnut Hill. 
And now it's time for Teed Off, brought to you by Yingling, America's he oldest plays, brewery. He plays with me. None of his friends play golf. Welcome back. Inside Golf continues with Teed Off today from Steppy Sports Bar in East Norton, right at Facenda Whitaker Lanes. Jason to 202 off of 422 on our panel from the Philadelphia Daily News, Mike Kern. Anthony Termina is the managing partner of Steppies and Facenda Whitaker Lanes. And Tony Leodore, no stranger to teed off from uh, Golf Styles Magazine and Golf Talk Live on WNTP. Since we're here talking golf and talking other sports, specifically here at Facenda Whitaker Lanes, Anthony, give us a little history. I mean, everybody probably, most viewers know John Facenda, Jack Whitaker were integral in this whole development back in what? Late 59. Wow. What happened? Yes. How did it all come together? Well, it came about uh, back in the late 50s as Boeing was uh, the unbelievable boom that it was that the three local investors that had a different Boeing center were coming up here into the East Norton area to build a 28 lane Boeing center and competition was starting to come in very close within a block or two of Facenda Whitaker Lane, so they decided to reach out to John Facenda and Jack Whitaker. Two big names in the Philadelphia, Philadelphia area. area, and I offered them a small percentage each for the use of their name. And it started opened in October 15th of 1959, and on October 16th, 1959, they broke through the wall and started to build the other 22 lanes, which now gives us the 50 we have today. And the competition at that point decided not even to build their bowling centers. Well, bowling had a great run back in the 50s, 60s. Tennis sort of came on, I guess, late 70s. Development of a lot of indoor tennis facilities to go along with outdoor courts. Mike, we know the golf boom in the 90s, which has, shall we say, subsided a little bit. Is it possible, do you think, that golf will fall on hard times like maybe bowling did for a while in tennis? Well, it's fallen on hard times. Right. I mean, the numbers... Has it stopped or is it leveled off? Or what? That's the question. Yeah. You know, if I had the answer, I would... Uh, I mean, the numbers, if you look at the numbers of people who are getting out of the game on a yearly basis now, it's, it's getting kind of alarming. Um, and I can only judge by the way it's going to continue. Do young people... Are young people going to play the game? Is it affordable? Will they devote the six hours that you need to play it? I'm not so sure. My, my son's 25 years old. He plays when he plays with me. None of his friends play golf. That, to me, is sad. When I was that age, I had six, seven, eight, nine, ten people that would play golf with me. So it seems like certainly what was happening 10, 12 years ago has slowed off a lot. But, you know, will it go the way of bowling or tennis? I, I'm not smart enough to have that answer. Are you I would smart like to enough not. to have that answer? <laughs> no, Mr. Mr. Well, the, the, uh, the difference, golf's numbers have fallen off a few percentage points. Uh, whereas in the case of bowling, there was a dramatic drop uh, after the boom time of the 50s, and tennis dropped off 60%. You know, so they, they are big differences right there. Uh, could it happen to golf? I, I sort of doubt that it would ever get to those kind of percentages because there's so much money invested, and, and you have <laughs> some very intrinsic advantages over especially tennis. You know, tennis, it didn't take long to figure out that when you play, you know, you could have six, seven, eight, nine, ten shots in a row that are exactly the same. Golf, no two shots are the same. Obviously, every tennis court's the same. Every golf course is different. Right. So there are those kind of things that keep bringing you back to golf all the time. And as long as Americans are outdoor people who love getting out and enjoying the beauty of nature and the, those things, that's the advantage to it. But it is... Is it a question of America and the rest of the world? Because golf seems to be growing, and tennis even. You know, I, I mean, I can't speak for tennis, but, but golf around the world, and, and everybody talks about China yeah. as this next, you know, great thing. So maybe it's two separate questions. Yeah, golf construction around the rest of the world is growing, but, of course, they started for zero in places like China or Africa. We put the question to our audience here at Steppies, and we're going to bring on Kevin Crescenzo. Now, Kevin is the manager. Kevin, join us, if you will. What is the feeling among uh, the people behind us here about whether golf is uh, due for even more of a decline in terms of popularity? Well, as far as uh, popularity, yes, 42%, and no, 58%. Okay, so it's no meaning that uh, maybe golf is due for a rebound, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. Well, first of all, we want to thank Anthony and Kevin for hosting our teed-off segment today at Steppies. 
the sports bar, Facenda Whitaker Lanes. We even had Jack Whitaker on our show last year. He's doing fine. Right. We got to get uh, Anthony. We got to get Jack back up here, huh? Three you games for that. a dollar. There you go. The man who uh, lent his name to this whole place. We'll be back inside golf continues in a moment. Join us at Steffi's Sports Bar and Grill for all the Phillies and preseason Eagles games. We also have the MLB Satellite Package, so you can see your favorite out-of-market team. We feature various nightly pint specials for $1.75, and don't miss our award-winning 25-cent wing special. The Philadelphia section of the PGA of America is celebrating 90 years. Since 1921, the professionals of the Philadelphia section have proven themselves to be the players, teachers, managers, and stewards of the game of golf in the Philadelphia area. They are the experts in the game and business of golf. Please join us in celebrating our 90-year commitment to the game of golf. Nike Golf, in partnership with the Philadelphia Section PGA, present Better Golf. Hey folks, Lou Guzzi here at beautiful Talamore Country Club. That was a knockdown shot. That was a level 1.5 swing with a full finish with a seven iron. Golf ball went low. It went 90 yards underneath the wind, underneath trees. We need the knockdown shot for sure. Now I see a lot of my students try to hit knockdown shots, playing the ball way back in their stance and hitting down on the ball abruptly. I don't want you to do any of that. Here's how we're gonna do this. I'm using my three level swing system. I'm going to make a smaller swing in the back swing and I'm going to complete my finish position. Now I've got to tell my body to do this. So I rehearse it in a practice swing, back, full finish through, and then I'm going to watch the shape of the shot as the ball leaves the club face. Remember we reduce the size of our swing, that reduces the swing speed. It hits the ball lower, we can use 7 iron, 8, 9 wedge, any club we want to hit a knockdown. Here we go, level 1.5, full finish, a beautiful 90 to 100 yard knockdown shot. Beautiful little knockdown shot, full finish accelerated. Remember, size of backswing, reduction of speed, golf ball stays low, pay attention, watch the flight, watch the distance. I know you're gonna be able to hit these knockdown shots. And remember, keep them in the fairway. Thanks again to Lou Guzzi for his better golf tip, to Andy and Steve for everything we wanted to know about stack and tilt, and to Mike Mack, host pro here at Burlington Country Club for giving Colleen a tour, especially on those back nine birdie putts. And for everything you want to know about Burlington Country Club, remember, go to InsideGolf.net. That's going to do it for this week's edition. We survived a hurricane, an earthquake, Hope Mother Nature goes easy on us for this month of September. For Colleen Wolf, I'm Harry Donahue. Remember, no matter how bad it's going for you out there, don't pick up. See you next time on Inside Golf. Inside Golf has been brought to you by Yingling, America's oldest brewery. Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, where America goes to play. Now fly nonstop on Spirit Airlines. Details at phillytomyrtle.com by Nike Golf, and by the Philadelphia Section PGA, celebrating 90 years.